Have you been waiting here a long time? The traffic sucks on the north side. And did you order yet? Or should we wait? How are you doing? Are you okay? No matter what I hope you don't forget We don't give in to the weakness We don't give in to the weakness Dreaming of her face again I hate the way I miss her torment I've come this far, I know I can't forget We don't give in to the weakness And I just want to lose control I want to fly like I've never flown And I just want to lose control I want to feel like I've never known Drop that guy, he's just in it St. Jupiter are growing in the yard And I made sure that I planted them At least three feet apart To discourage all the morning pissers Trying to leave their mark It's been a long, long summer It's been a long year I feel fat and old and dumber and I'm watching time disappear The flowers from St. Jupiter look better in these pots I remember when we bought them I complained cause it was hot if I could travel back in time, I'd just shut my mouth and let you shop. It's been a long, long winter. It's been a strange year. There ain't a day that I don't miss her, but that's just how it is around here. Flowers from St. Jupiter, the 50 cents a pack. The ones that grew on Jocelyn Road have shriveled and turned black. But if it's meant to be the things that leave someday come back, well, that's a long time waiting. That's a hard life. 
So I'll just keep the fire in me raging And I'll be doing alright I'll just keep the fire in me raging And I'll be doing alright I was born in Carolina, near the paper mill I learned the town was haunted, rebels had been killed Something grew up twisted in me, ripping all the seams But I was mended by the love of my mama To fight the devils down in me I left for Nashville with no money to my name I sang on 17th like I was on a stage The road that I took then was full of ditches and mistakes And deep in the shadow of my failures I saw some things were worth the pain Cause I want to live Like I'm only made of air And I will forgive What I've done out of despair I'm trying to find the happiness and healing In the things that still need some repair My marriage ended and I moved up north to mend I tried to fight it like a needle in my skin The hole inside me kept on growing Everything went black Was then I heard the words of my father Have faith, there's no storm that doesn't pass Cause I want to live Like I'm only made of air And I will forgive What was done out of despair I wish you only happiness and healing And I hope that you're finding it out there I've lived into the next Maybe St. Peter Will just average all the best But don't let me in to heaven Till Goliath knows defeat And when it's done I'll slip into nirvana And let go of everything that's holding me On in me Hey, I'm Bill DeVille, and I'm here with Rust and Kelly. It's so nice to see you. Good to see you. How's it going? It's going pretty good. Good. You know, we're on tour, so... That's my first question, you know, after this pandemic. Is it nice to be back out on the road again? Does it feel good? Yeah. I mean, it was really scary there for a minute. Like, you know, I think for everyone, it was scary mm -hmm. as far as what any sort of future held. But in particular, if your job is where people congregate, you know, there was this fear of maybe not being able to do it again, you know? Yeah. And so the relief of being back on stage doing what I love to do the most is, it's kind of wordless to be able to express how happy it makes me. Yeah. So let's talk about the album, The Weakness. Was this made uh, during the pandemic then? Um, off and on. I mean, yeah. I there was also the uncertainty of like, what's the next, you know, move? I can't, I was, we had just released 
my second album, Shape of Destroy, mm-hmm. and weren't really able to promote it. You know, so it's like, well, um, we can turn our attention towards working on a third project or whatever. Everything was kind of up in the air. So I started writing what became for this record during the pandemic. But uh, it was really more of an exercise to keep myself sane. Yeah. You know, which gave, like it gave me that um, uh, the feeling of how it used to be when I'd write, you know, before I started making records, I'd just write because I, you know, personally had to express myself some way, mm-hmm. get it out. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the new album, you, you bought this uh, old Victorian house yeah. in a place called Portland, Tennessee. Is that just outside of Nashville then? Yeah, it's about 30 miles. Mm-hmm. About 30 miles too far for really anyone to come over for dinner, which is nice sometimes, but sure. um, it was purposely, like I, I did it on purpose so that I would, uh, I don't know, I, 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 I've I wanted to catch this maybe vortex in my life, you know, the pandemic kind of like teed it up in that I could be somewhat of a figurative man in the woods for yeah. a moment to really get to um, relearn who I am and what I'm about and like what I, what I stand on and for and what I want to do with my life, you know? Mm-hmm. The album is called The Weakness and the title track to me, I, I hear it and it, it seems like kind of a hopeful song. It kind of says, keep your head up. It, it's hard out there. Is there some truth yeah, to that? I like that. That's pretty yeah. good actually. Yeah. Yeah. Keep your head up. It's hard out there. I think that's a sentiment that every single person should be reminded of maybe constantly. Yeah. It's, it is tough out there sometimes. We, you know, we can um we can deepen our celebrations of the joyous times and make those stretch further past the times that we suffer. Mm-hmm. But when, you know, we all kind of fall to the human condition of um either feeling less than or falling short or stumbling or whatever it is, I think having some sort of mantra um is the reminder and could be that difference between you staying down and getting up yeah and that's what that song was is this kind of like cyclical repetitive nirvana-esque you know kind of almost annoyingly said too many times we don't give in to the weakness yeah personally for myself another another song that really caught my ear was was mending song and and you mentioned uh you hear the words of of your father have faith there's no storm that doesn't pass is that something your, your father really said yeah he's got these um he's from uh alabama He's got these like truth bombs, you know yeah. what I mean? He's also said he, you know, you can't steer a boat by looking back at the wake. <laughs> That's so good, you know what yeah. I mean? He's like these really like uh, these idioms that put you in this moment. It's like a so clear and almost um, storybook that you can't help but to, um, I don't know, have that wisdom be imparted. And mm-hmm. he said it at such a time that I needed to hear it. You know, when you feel like you might not make it through something, like you really like, there everyone experiences that. You feel like, okay, like it's wall after wall after wall after wall, and there's never a breakthrough that comes clean. And then you hear something like that, and it just hits you right at this at the time that you need it. And uh, that gave me so much hope, so I had to put it in the song. Yeah, you've you've done a lot with your father over yeah, the years. Yeah. I mean, I, I remember seeing you at uh, in Nashville at Americana Fest, and your dad was playing the uh, the pedal steel with you. And, and oh uh, yeah, man, yeah, he's a uh, that guy. He's a great guy. He's a he's the best man, you know, that I know. And it at first we didn't necessarily like super. Um, we weren't super close when uh, in my like twenties. I mean, we were always very close. I'm close to my family, but I kind of pushed some of my family away when I was, you know, doing a lot of uh, use of substances, overuse is, is a better way to put it. Um, and it's so amazing that like through music and as like I got better uh, with myself and took on music as a serious career, him being a part of that in the very beginning um, has strengthened um, and deepened our relationship more than I think anything else could. Yeah. You know, one thing you rarely see, you know, you hear of fathers producing sons' records. Right, right, right. But right. rarely do you hear of a son producing his father's record. What in the world was that experience like? That is pretty nuts. Yeah. That's so cool. That experience was one of the most important emotional experiences of my life. Like my dad, you know, he was offered record contracts and publishing and management, all this stuff back in the day in like 1971, and he's playing bars and stuff. 
And uh, he actually won Bob Hope's national songwriting competition. Oh, really? Yeah, and he was so he was offered this like package deal, and he turned it all down, um, so that uh, you know, I guess coming from depression era parents, you know, they had a he. There wasn't really much convincing, you know, that uh, this could be like a livelihood to provide for a family. Yeah. So for him to like re-enter the scene with me. And then when we're on the road, you know, he'd be playing guitar in the back of the bus and he'd be playing some of these songs that like I'd heard my entire life. I'm like you should it's just recordings. record these. Yeah, yeah. So we did. And uh, I mean, one of the songs on there is he wrote when he was 18, you know, so it's uh, 48 years in the making, you know, to see, to have that come out and, and come out for real for everyone else to hear is in, insane. I'm so like, I don't think there's anything accolade or award that would beat the feeling of helping him accomplish that did you did you crack the whip in the studio saying Hell you, yeah. you gotta try this you yes gotta. i did yeah i mean because you know it's great we have this like relationship where he uh he listens to my advice on you know when it comes to things um with like songwriting and you know i listen to his advice about everything else you know and yeah i was i was in there and just like no, that, there's a much better take than that. Like that, that one, that one, maybe, maybe that one, but I need you to get back in there and, you know, lay another one down. Yeah. He's like, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Yeah. So when you were sound checking a while ago, I heard you play a little bit of All the Best by John Prine. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a good one. It's a really good one. What oh, does yeah. John Prine mean to you? Uh, John Prine, you know, his songwriting you know, it's one, it's one of those eternal, you know, voices yeah. um, that filters to you. If you're, if you're, you know, of the craft and care about songwriting, like you'll hear John Prine. And he definitely in the beginning inspired, you know, the sense of like being able to turn a phrase that was funny, but also deeply moving at the same time. And, uh, you know, I didn't know after hearing that song for the first time when I was young and loving it, you know, that fate would bring me and his son together. Tommy Prine, his record I just produced. Oh, really? Yeah. Tommy Prine, uh, he just uh, he just signed with 30 Tigers and watched him. And he's like, his, he just announced a tour. He's actually opening the Nashville show for me at Ascend in uh, June. So we, me and uh, Gina Johnson, who is a producer in town, she also engineered uh, a record of mine. We co-produced Tommy's debut LP. It's coming out in June. That's that's exciting. It's nuts. Yeah, it's really nuts. Like how uh, Nashville can can work like that. Do you think it, it's hard to be, you know, the son of John Prine, and everybody is going to look at you like, you know, you're supposed to be this, you know, you're supposed to inherit this from your father? And yeah, I mean. I think it depends on what your mentality is with it and why you do it. You know, everyone has their own mantle, yeah. you know, and that question will be asked, but Tommy is so different, but also pulling from like, it's in his blood, you know? And so I think whenever someone hears Tommy, they hear something very uniquely special and, uh, and it's, and it's an incredible anecdote in his story that, you know, yeah. his father was a master songwriter as well. Yeah. Speaking of, of uh, you know legendary artists, John, or excuse, excuse me, <laughs> I mentioned Willie Nelson. Yeah, is ninety this weekend. I heard that. Yeah, I heard Isn't that. that crazy. That He's is still crazy. out there performing. He's performing today at the Hollywood Bowl, and <laughs> my boy's selling out the Hollywood Bowl. I'm ninety years old. That's pretty sick. <laughs> I love that. Are you a big Willie guy? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, he he was just like a figure. He was always there. You yeah. know, and I think I speak for everyone when. I say we're glad to always have them there. Yeah, you know? yeah. You have a have an EP called Dirt Emo. Yeah, yeah. What is Dirt Emo to you? I mean, look. Here's the truth: is like that was a tweet that I made. Yeah, uh, and it kind of caught on. Because Dirt Emo, I was just like, uh, you know, I mean, I made like a to me, I made a folk rock record with mm -hmm. Dying Star and Shape Destroy. Like, I don't know really what country music is. Like, I don't really know what that how to record that i just kind of know how to you know it felt more like jackson brown and john prine you know meets a little bit of like dashboard confessional than country yeah and so my tweet was like in defense of me not being a specific like stereotyped you know classic like first album new artist statement i'm not this you can't label me so i was like yeah. i'm dirt emo it was just kind of off the dome to me that's um 
I don't know. It's just like alternative music, but like, you know, there's, there might be some steel guitar occasionally in there. Yeah. You know, yeah. like folk, folk based, but folk is like, I don't know. Everybody sings folk music. Did, did you grow up on, on this emo music? I did. Yeah. 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 So like those, I would say my melodies, like my, like chorus melodies, they're all so sing songy. And that is, uh, something that like traditional folk music and, pop punk or emo have in common yeah these very nursery rhyme you know phrased and cadenced melodies they're just like instantly catchy mm -hmm. and so i'm kind of always shooting for that i want if i'm singing something i want you to be able to sing it too yeah, yeah. did you uh read the book sell out the major label feeding frenzy that swept punk emo and hardcore no i didn't you should read it i, did, I, I just finished want it up i got it for christmas for really somebody younger than me and it was a fantastic fantastic read. that yes. sounds like it'd be fantastic yeah oh yeah because that stuff like the moment that like you know the big wigs found out what the kids like yeah you know commercialization stepped in and kind of ruined the scene a bit sure did yeah. but there's been somewhat of a comeback there has yeah no it's pretty crazy like dashboard confessional right. is playing bigger rooms than they ever have now and you know what's funny is that my on my first record the artists that reached out to me first without me, this is before saying anything about emo or anything like that. Just when the record came out, the first artists that reached out to me were artists from that scene. Really? Like Chris Caraba? Yeah. Chris reached out, Adam Lazara from Taking Back Sunday, mm -hmm. um, All Time Low. And, you know, I'm homies with the All Time Low guys still. We talk about playing shows together all the time, just haven't linked our schedules up. But uh, yeah, and Chris has become a, a good friend of mine. So it's kind of, it naturally did yeah. that, you know what I mean? That's Without awesome. intention, which is cool. Yeah. yeah. What What's your thoughts? And this is kind of a buzz, well, two letters of the moment, AI, artificial intelligence. What's my thought on artificial intelligence? Yeah. I mean, I think um, I want it to be something to be scared of because it's kind of fun, Yeah. you know? But I, I watched a documentary recently on Netflix about like what, like, the fear of AI is a little bit like exaggerated through Hollywood and that like yeah. artificial intelligence is somewhat of a misnomer because like we're like, it can't do anything that it's not coded to do. Right. So, I mean, unless someone codes a robot to destroy the world, <laughs> which that would be scary. I mean, I think artificial intelligence in music is a threat. Yeah. I think it's a threat to culture for sure. Like, sure, if you want to make like a kid's bop something and, you know, uh, put a, you know, a pop song on the radio that's just like for someone to tap their foot. Like, yeah, we have we've had player pianos. Yeah. But as far as that being somewhat of a, a becoming a staple in the studio, I mean, I just feel like that would destroy something. You wonder what would pop up if you wrote in, make a song that sounds like Rust and Kelly. Yo, that would be so nuts. And it like writes a better song than me. <laughs> I would be I would be so uh I don't know. I I guess I would be like, you know, it'd be like Terminator. I'd go on the the side of the humans. You know, start gearing <laughs> right, up. Right. Right. <laughs> so nice chatting with you. Nice chatting with you too, man. It's Rust and Kelly. Thanks for dropping by. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Yeah, thanks for talking with me. My pleasure. The Current is public media made possible thanks to member support.